Gruesome Magazine. Welcome to Decades of Horror in the 1970s. I know we're doing the music twice tonight. Okay. Like me. <laughs> Go, Chad! <laughs> I should have never have come with you. We're going to get killed. We're going to get killed. I hear the demons of the red moon like the other time. I know they're here. We're all going to die. <laughs> this is episode 189, recorded May 10th, 2023. Cue that music! Gruesome Magazine. I hope I make that noise when I die. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I am your host, Doug Rodden, and this podcast about horror movies released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my coach, Chad Hunt, Bill Mulligan, and I will take a tackle another classic or not so classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Whoa. Uh, Jeff, please save me and talk about Play Now Media. Oh. A handoff. Um, yeah, so uh, Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Play Now Media, and uh, all of the Decades of Horror are shown on uh, a variety of their channels, in particular 70s. Uh, you can watch that on the Wicked Horror TV channel and the uh, Free Horror Movie channel, and also Retro Horror 70s, 80s, and 90s, but I believe that's only on Roku right now. Um, and just an example of all the different channels they have on there. Holy cow. Uh, the ultimate wrestling or ultimate classic wrestling channel. I think it is, uh, according to Michael, it's got the wrestling content as the world's second or third largest collection of exclusive pro wrestling content over 5,000 hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow. From all over the world. Five. So anyway, Thousand. uh, that's wow. one to check out besides yeah. all the ones that we're on, which has a, have great selections of horror and science fiction movies. Yes. And if you're watching this one on one of those channels, we thank you. Yes, we, we do. do. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, let me introduce the crew. We'll start off with the man you just heard, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. I, I Welcome to the train wreck. Welcome to yeah, the yeah, train yeah, wreck, yeah. sir. Well, I, this is one of those weeks where home ownership goes, wait a minute. Everything is going to break <laughs> all at once. And you're going to have a long <laughs> string of people going in and out of your house fixing I shit. I had no mm. idea where you were going with that. That is so awesome. All right. Also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special bricks guru, and all around nice guy. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. I'm doing fine. My house is in relatively good shape for now. So... And I forgot Yay. to bring my book down again. Oh, 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 I'm supposed to like show that thing every time. Published like author, that. Bill Mulligan. Oh, yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you. Yes. What's yes. the name uh, of that Rom. book, Bill? Why, the name of that book is Rom. R-A-U-M. It's the name of a demon. And uh, it's you can get it on Amazon. Just $10. A price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. That's I got right. mine. <laughs> yeah, make sure we got to get a link in our own show notes. Uh, yes. Also joining us tonight is... Uh, comic book writer, co-host Decades of Horror, and he's also a uh, producer and director, Mr. Chad Hunt. Howdy. Howdy. How you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm good. How can I follow those two guys? I, I can't. Um, I can't. Why are you? I, that's why I put you there. You must follow. All right, guys. We are here. If you're wondering what <laughs> our crazy... Thoughts are doing. We are here to review the werewolf and the yeti from 1975, one of the uh, many uh, Waldemar uh, werewolf films uh, with Paul Nashi in the lead. Uh, this one's, I think, smack dab in the middle. It's a pretty dang on close. Uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. We've done one, uh, one or two of. We've done two. We've done two of them so far. I'm sure yeah. we'll do more. Uh, they are. Uh, he's prolific in many of his roles in the 70s it's uh, six, and late in 60s too for that matter uh but well how are we going to do this jeff i guess we should just jump into the card and then we'll come back around and get our first impressions is that what we want to do yeah, yeah sure. i think so i think so all right the werewolf yeah. oh and the yeti look at those look at those teeth oh, snappers mm -hmm. uh 1975 directed by 
Miguel Iglesias Bons, uh, written by Paul Nashi, also known as Jacinco Molina. Uh, cast is Paul Nashi, Mercedes Molina, Sal, uh, Sylvia Solar, and Gil Vidal. Good job, yeah. Doc. Uh, even though I stuttered a little bit. All right. Production company is Constellation Films, Inc. and Pro Films. Released December 1975 in Spain and then came to the States in 1977. Uh, on TV, by the way. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Box office is uh, 300000 in the U.S. So I guess it did go to the box office. It was on TV very yeah. shortly after that. Um, 275,000 theater emissions in Spain. The synopsis is... Valdemar joins the expedition to find a Yeti in the Himalayas where he's captured by two cannibalistic demon nymphets <laughs> and becomes yeah. their sex slave. Really? Uh, they transform him into a werewolf, setting him loose to roam the mountainside. Hmm. Yeah, not what I would have called him, but hey, I kind of like the, yeah, the I, way those yeah. words all fit together. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Cannibalistic demon nymphets. I, you know... Sounds they're, like a trauma film. They're an interesting. Sounds like a great interesting. band name. Yeah, you know there might be a band out there called that somewhere. You never know. By now, probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's find out uh, what we thought of this. Uh, Jeff, you picked this one, right? I did. Uh, I did. When did you first see this at Masterpiece, and what did you think? Oh, just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, as I talked about in our last episode, I bought the. Uh, Two Scream Factory Nashy collections. Oh man! On Blu-ray, and I thought, well, I gotta start putting those to use. So uh, I watched a couple of them and went, "Hey, you know what? I kind of like this one." I found out later that it's known for being having the most nudity and the most blood of many of his. So you know, but I didn't know that when I picked it. Hmm. Anyway, uh, you know, it has an interesting story. I think, and I, I don't know, you know, it's got its faults, like a lot of these movies, but it's fun. And I, it looked like real snow to me, which is always a plus in yeah. my book. Uh, although they're supposed to be in Kathmandu and I, I, uh, I don't think we were buying that. Um, oh. yeah, no, he does, no, he does lots of werewolf stuff. I love his leaps. He like, ah, they do these leaps everywhere. They're like, it remind and him writhing around reminds me of when I was like ten years old and acting out stuff with my friend. You know, um, I'm not saying he's not better than me when I was ten. I'm just saying it reminds me of that. So anyway, <laughs> Snow uh, Angels. I, I loved it. We we get lots of throats ripped out. We get a couple of decapitations, uh, or or one at least. Uh, we get some fall on a in a pit of spikes. And, mm, that we uh, do. Just uh, lots of good stuff. <laughs> we do indeed. Paul uh, Dashy. The, Bill Mulligan, sir. When did you first see the werewolf and the Yeti? And uh, yesterday. What was, okay, what was your first impression? Yesterday. Um. Wait. Okay. So we've kind of been on a we've kind of been on a roller coaster ride of stinkers lately. And um, and I I expected this would continue the tradition, so I went in with the lowest of low expectations, and I was pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed this. Um, no no snark or anything. I actually enjoyed it. It's it's well filmed. Now the version I saw cut out most of the nudity. So and I know where'd you watch it? There. Where'd you watch it? Uh, maybe Tubi. Okay. Okay, I think, and it was a good print. Um, except for the scenes that were day for night, but they look like crap, I'm sure, it, when they was first released. It's just it's a lousy way to see things. Um, but like the scenes in the cave were really nice color and good shots. And I, I thought I thought Neishi was actually a pretty good actor in this too. He seemed, uh, you know, I kind of got it. I've always, I've always felt like he looked like one of the Belushi brothers. And I'm like, <laughs> why did this guy become a horror superstar? He doesn't, there's nothing about him that really screams, you know, horror or anything but he made a lot of horror stuff he wasn't ashamed to be in horror movies i admire that i like that he played pretty much every character you can play so this was an odd one in that it, it has no continuity with the others and it's always been kind of loosey-goosey with the continuity but he's not a werewolf at the beginning of the movie he's turned into a werewolf not by werewolves but what seemed to be vampires or i guess one could argue 
cannibalistic um, nymphet demons. Nymphets? Nymphets? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't it soldiers. seem like one was a vampire and one was a werewolf? Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Was, yeah. I, I don't know. The important thing is they were both nymphets. Let's not get bogged down in the, uh, Well, yeah, you know, cannibalistic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, and that, that too. Um, <laughs> and then as a werewolf, he's kind of a good guy. He only kills the bad people, of which there are plenty. But, but this, there are. This, <laughs> yeah, this movie reminds me Okay, so is it a good movie? Well, not in the traditional sense of the word, but it reminds me of something like Mighty Peking Man. I uh, ah. films like that. They move. This movie doesn't drag. It moves. You know, we start out Yeti attack, and then, you know, this and this and this, and here come the Nymphets, and uh, oh, no, there's pirates or some. you know, uh, Shaka Khan is out there. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So Careful, you'll uh, get banned. I know, you'll get banned off of YouTube or something for, I don't know, sorry. Uh, there suddenly a guy's impaled. Ooh, that was that looked uncomfortable. Um, yeah, Ooh, you know. There, oh, and the, and then then a woman is skinned alive to 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 take care of Shaka's venereal disease. And um, there's spikes, and there's this, and there's that, and and yeah, I I do like. I've always kind of liked the way Nishi's werewolf. He's a, he's an aggressive werewolf. He's not, he's not as pumped up as he is in some of the movies where he really just is like. Argh. But yeah, he's jumping off trampolines. He's ripping out throats. He lets the blood just dribble down his face. And he's cool. He's a cool werewolf. It's not. It's not the greatest werewolf design. It's not the worst. Um, this was fun. I just. I enjoyed myself. I just. I just wish. And and this is a problem. When the name of the movie is the werewolf and the yeti, the yeti is a crushing disappointment. Ah. It's pretty obvious that as soon as they saw the yeti costume, they're like, "Oh, damn! Let's show this as little as possible." And put a blue filter over everything, and uh, it every scene with the Yeti is kind of like the final of Dracula versus Frankenstein, where something's going on, but it's kind of hard to see. Uh, he gets he gets taken out like a bitch too, so yep. um, almost hardly <laughs> Somebody, even needed to be in the movie. Sounds like your kitty has a lot to say about it as well. Oh yeah, yeah she. Um, all right, Chad Hunter, you're the one that picked uh, one of our classic episodes uh fury of the wolf man right uh yeah. what did you what do you think of this entry into the uh of Aldabar Deninsky, a series of werewolf films uh, that i wish i picked this one first ah. before the other one because i really i like this one a lot better than what was it fury of the wolf man fury of the yeah. werewolf um yeah this was it had a good story a better story I haven't watched that many Nashi films, so um, uh, but this one was a lot better. I had fun watching it too. It was um, had a lot of crazy stuff in it. You had those cannibalistic humanoid underground Dracula <laughs> girls, um, sex the sex slavers. <laughs> get nipets, you nipets. We didn't get enough of that. I watched the Shop Factory <laughs> TV version of this, and it had all the nudity. Oh, wow. Uh, there you go. Ah. It, it had all the nudity. Um, so there was that. Um, yeah, we got a few uh, Jim Kirk uh, flying drop kicks <laughs> in the fight yes. scenes. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it was good. It was fun to watch. Uh, I like that he um, was sort of a hero werewolf in this. He didn't, he didn't go after... Uh, the, his girlfriend there uh, when he had a chance um but it was it was good when he came in and he fought off all the the henchmen mm. uh, and the bandits uh that was a cool scene um uh, yeah there was a lot of gore in this uh more than i expected there to be the uh the chuds were eating the hands and feet and innards of of uh what was what was the guy's name that just fell off the edge of the earth I, i'm assuming that was him Yes, uh, it was. was. Yeah, I don't know. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, that was cool. There's a lot of blood, a lot of guts, a lot, a lot of everything. Had a cool villain. Had a couple of cool mm -hmm. villains: the con guy and uh, and the lady in red there. Uh, that was and there. the yeti. Who? No. It was a yeti. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember yeti. I thought he was like a cat, and he was trying to fight himself in a mirror or something. Mm. <laughs> but um, oh my god, yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have an interesting history with this particular film. I, 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 I would argue that this is one of the best werewolf designs. I love this design of the werewolf. Um, I mean, it, Lon Chaney's, you know, Larry uh, Talbot werewolf is, of course, the best. And there's 
a few few in between there, but I really love this. A broad shouldered, barrel chested, very uh, feral, uh, and well, it's also you you have to, it's acquired taste as well. Uh, I saw this originally back in the day, um, and it may have been it might it wasn't 1977. It was it was closer to the 80s, and it was playing on some chance no i it was before i moved down there so it had to be in the late 70s and it was playing on some channel uh as like an afternoon horror film but not not the ones i was used to because I, I wasn't where i was living at the point but anyway and it, it and i was like oh okay werewolf versus the eddie i gotta see this and i and the movie was like only an hour long because it was cut up so bad right and i was so disappointed that we didn't i was like where the frick is the yeti <laughs> so i remember <laughs> hating this movie and plus it was a bad cut you know it was all really uh faded and stuff i just remembered just not liking this movie and i haven't seen it since because of that experience so I was really happy that we finally got this on the docket, and uh, I watched it. I'm not sure which one I picked, if I picked the the one you did, Bill, or the one Chad did, yeah. but it was on Tubi, but I don't know which one I got. I, I think I watched the one you watched. I don't remember a whole lot of duty. But at the same time, I uh, I don't you – know, it looked great. I mean, it was a, it was a really nice-looking copy. I was like, okay, now this is how you need to watch these films when they're restored like this because they look so mm. – wonderful and, and that's probably how they looked when they first saw them in the theaters before they would hit a whole bunch of theaters and get all cut up but because that's how they used to do it back in the day right bill they were just like oh we, we don't want this in our theater cut cut no, the next no, guy no. wouldn't have that scene um yeah. but i i uh so i enjoyed the heck out of this uh i i there's there's still a couple better ones and we'll get to those there's one I think uh, Bill will agree is is probably the best of the entire batch. Mm -hmm. um, we won't name names now, but it, so I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly entertained by this one because I knew the Yeti wasn't actually in the freaking movie, even though I mean there's like ten seconds I'm at the beginning and ten seconds I'm at the end. Definitely doesn't um, doesn't warrant. Uh... A title, no, no. <laughs> but yeah. that's how you sell this movie. Um, well, that's how the U.S. sells it. It's a different name elsewhere, but yes, we'll get yes. to, we'll get to all that. So, yeah, I had a I had a great time. I'm down to doing as many Paul Nashie films as we possibly can squeeze into our our schedule. I'm trying to remember. In Fury of the Wolfman, wasn't it also that he had gotten the bite of a yeti, and that's what turned him into a. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I just I feel like that was mentioned. We I don't know. It's it's kind of I've, fun that the, you know the same werewolf with the same name gets you know created yeah. as a werewolf a dozen different ways. I was going to say um, everywhere this Valdemar guy goes, he gets bitten by yeah. something and turns into a werewolf. Yeah, yeah. kind of bad luck. Yeah. True. yeah, I mean, should we? Well, there's a whole lot of stuff we can go through. Do you, I? I want to just name all these names of the werewolf films, right? Sure. The, the Valdemar, I always say it's Valdemar, it's you know, spelled with a W, but um, started with uh, Mark of the Wolfman, which is Frankenstein's Bloody Terror. And Bill, you and I got to see that one in 3D, which yeah. is like most people think it's like like urban legend, right? That it was actually, but it actually came yeah. 3D, but it did so, no, nobody actually showed it in 3D for a long time. Anyway, uh, Las Noches de Hombre Lobo is Knights of the Wolfman. Wow, even uh, I could figure that one out. Los Monstros del Terror is Assignment Terror, also known as Dracula versus Frankenstein, which is the same name as another movie of the same year, which is um confusing. Uh yeah, it might be uh what it's not famous, infamous, infamous movie. Uh we did that one, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. We did Assignment oh, yeah. Terror. Yes. Um we did. Fury of the Wolfman, uh, uh La, La Noche La Noche del Walpurgis. Walpurgis, Walpurgis, Walpurgis. Walpurgis um, which is Werewolf versus the Vampire Woman, which is the one we need to do yeah. uh, before yeah. this year is up. We need to have this one on the list before the end of this year. It's on um, Tubi. Yes, it is. It's everywhere. It's it's also one of the yeah. public domain ones. Public domain. Uh, then there's Doctor Jekyll and and the and the Werewolf and the Wolfman, which is another one we need to do just because of that crazy title. 
uh, Curse of the Devil, The Werewolf and the Yeti, which is, this one was also known as, uh, I don't even know how to, Maldition de la Bestia. Uh, there's the, re the Return of the Werewolf, The Beast and the Magic Sword, La Canthropo, and The Tomb of the Werewolf, which was one of the last ones. Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to throw those out there. A lot of great films. Um, and even this one is known as uh, Night of the Howling Beast is another name it's known as. Oh, Hall of the Mountain King. Yeah, you got those down here somewhere. I think it was on the AKA place. There wasn't room for them on the card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's just so many names. Um, it's just crazy. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Night of the Howling Beast, Hall of the Mountain King, and The Horror of the Werewolf is a TV title. So. So the nudity, I think, Chad, that was mostly the two uh, cannibalistic nip fits, wasn't it? It was a, a quick was shot of the red woman. There was a dungeon in the dungeon. Oh, uh, that's had, right. I forgot about the dungeon. They had a lot of women tied up down there. And, yep. But, um, hmm. yeah, there was enough to keep me interested. <laughs> oh, there's actually, uh, what's her name, too? Sylvia's. He's got a nude scene with Sylvia. I forgot about that. Mm. Never mind. Oh, wow. So he shows up to his friend's house and immediately beds his daughter. Smooth. No, that's not until late. Oh, at okay. the very end after they are... Uh, oh, he waits until dad's dead. Well, I approve. That's that's good. <laughs> how, how long were they going to leave dad in that spike pit? That's I don't know. I, they didn't, they, forever, he was just going to rot right there. Yeah. Was, was, that the, was that the monk's head that was laying on the ground in that one quick flash? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. This this movie is fun in that respect. It is. It just is. don't go in expecting a yeti. There, I, I was watching it, and I'm going, the yetis at, at like the very beginning of it, and then nothing. They're yeah. they're always looking for the yeti. That's why they're there, uh, supposedly. But there's no Yeti, and I kept thinking, well, that was that was it for the Yeti. Well, they do bring them one of them back for a, yeah. and, to get and defeated he, by Valdemar. Right, and he's and he's part of the plot. I mean, that's one of the things that they're looking for. But you know, right, um, so I guess you can't, you know, you always want more Yeti in your Yeti films. Uh, but, yeah, that Yeti made that made the the worst Bigfoot episode of the Six Million Dollar Man look like Shakespeare. Oh, my gosh. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. there, there's something charming about <laughs> the Sasquatch in that. Yeah, there is. There is. There is. Yeah. There's some oh, yeah. special stuff about that. I don't I don't care. You can't. Don't don't you sour talk my. Especially the that, ones with Andre. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, um, the poster on the bottom is crazy. Indeed. Indeed. The big mouth. Oh, you know what? Let's stop. We got to do taglines. We got to do taglines. Dang it. All right. Before we uh, reveal all of them. All right. I was trying oh, to distract true. you guys like, oh, look over yeah. here. Oh, uh, what, what? I was kind of like not, oh. not paying attention. So now it's time for <laughs> taglines with Chad. Okay. Your taglines for this incredibly... Fantastic Paul Nashi film are as follows. You feel your heart pounding. You know it's out there. You can't scream. Now it's at your throat. My heart? Mm hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what well, it says. Yeah, it starts up in your throat. Yeah. Your heart's out there at, yeah. pounding at your throat. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's uncomfortable. Tagline number two Two bloodthirsty beasts in deadly combat. Gold. Where was that? Oh, oh, the Yeti? Oh, okay. At sure. the very end, if you blinked, you missed it. Tagline number three. Two bloodthirsty beasts engaged in savage fight to the death. Oh, still a lie. Kind of, it, kind of it the is, same. It is. Yeah. Well, it's not really a lie. It happened, but... It's not savage. Uh, it looked like they could barely see out of their masks as they, as they were dancing. swinging at each other. Right. <laughs> All right. Night time is not always the right time. What what is that? An ad for Miller Lite? It's, That's well, what I was I, getting ready to say. It Miller made me Light. think of it. It was on that Night of the Howling Beast poster. <laughs> oh. And those are your taglines. Oh, it's not on that one. It's on yeah. one I saw anyway. Ah. Uh. Well, that's a better poster. 
Uh, oh, no, there's blood. one. His he's lust for blood cannot be satisfied. We didn't get to see that. Oh, well, he's got oh. it dripping all over his face. I didn't he's see a that. Sloppy eater. <laughs> I I love this art. That's here. a cool one. Kind of looks like Werewolf of London. I was, yeah. Or not Werewolf yeah. of London. Uh, Curse, Curse of the, of the werewolf. werewolf. Curse of yeah. the yeah. Werewolf. Yeah. Ollie Reed. Ollie. 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 Huh. Yeah. So. That, that's the night, night of the Howling Beast is when it was released in the States in 1977. So. The top picture looked like he has boxing gloves on from my vantage point here. Mm -hmm. Maybe should I need be, to put my glasses on. Should be independent. Uh, what is it? Independent International Pictures did it. So. IP. The bottom poster has kind of a Rocky Horror feel. It's not, it's not, I, did, I was You're trying right. to picture what it is, and that is right. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking, but uh, yeah, that's good. Hmm. So I, I, why is it that Curse of the Beast is not a good title? Why we can't just translate? I thought hmm. Curse of the Beast was a decent title. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Night of the Howling. It's got a bunch of good titles. They release them one at a time, and people go see the same damn movie over and over again. It's like, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. It's, it's like there's four movies, and it's all the same one. I've, as soon as the as soon as they see the Yeti, they're like, God damn it! I know. <laughs> I've watched uh, <laughs> Werewolf versus the Vampire Woman, and they're two different titles. Thinking it was two yeah. different films, I'm pretty sure I did that. I'm gonna watch um, that later. Yeah, well, there he is. I there I really do him. think he looks pretty dapper and debonair in this movie. You know, it looks it's he looks good. Yeah, no, I get, like I like the black shirt pants. Well, the lighting's really good. Look at that lighting yeah. on this. Yeah. That is good yeah. lighting. I'm saying mm -hmm. this movie was you know well made. And then, but then you look at the day for night crap out in the woods, and that looks like the the stuff I shot on Super Eight when I was a kid. It doesn't. It's look blue. Good. It's blue. Yeah, it's just I, I hate day for night. It never mm -hmm. works. And yet people positive they that was lot. done to cover up the. Uh, the yeah, bad yeti the suit. The bad I, yeti suit. Yeah. yeah. You you watch any film in the 60s and 70s? There's a lot of day for night going on there. Yeah. I love that shot at the top. He's got that leering. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, this might have been at the height of his career. Was, you know, was right in, when he's doing all the films in the mm -hmm. in the mid-70s. I mean, he's just doing, pumping them out. There's all kinds. I mean, there's Nashy fans out there. There's a Nashy podcast. Now, is awesome. if, this, if this would have been a Hammer film, when he pulled that arrow out of that vampire, yeah, the vampire body, it that. would have started regenerating. Right? I was yeah. waiting for that. <laughs> Actually, yep. Um, but he, he manages to to do in the two nymphets with the hand arrow. And unless you think that's the end of the evil arrow. women in the movie, then Dragon Lady shows up. Dragon Lady. Yeah, I mean, you always got to chain up Valdemar. You do. I mean, he's you do. every film. He's got to be chained up. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's he has the, the best best look being a chained up werewolf. Yeah, he, he he does seem kind of comfortable in bondage, so who knows? <laughs> and I, and I like the shot at the bottom. You know, you know, you're a mad scientist when you start playing with the dry ice. Mm, yeah, that's... always a giveaway. And there's some werewolf shots. Some there's our boy. Shots. Ah, yeah. there he's dribbling. Mm. Yeah, it's it, it's uh... not the it's not the greatest costume, but I I actually kind of like it. The patchiness of it um, allow you know there there's enough of his eyes shown to to you know for him to do some emoting and. He gets some good expressions out of here. I mean, this is mm -hmm. not high, super high tech or anything, but those teeth, there's a, just a feral quality to his werewolf. I've always liked Nashi's werewolf, even in the lousy movies. He's mm -hmm. just, he really brings a physicality to it. You know, and uh, like you were saying, the eyes too, he does, he does a lot through his eyes. Um, when, after he rescued the girl from uh, the bandits or whatever, and he sort of looks mm -hmm. at her and his, his eyes were kind of, Looking mm -hmm. down like this, looking at her, that, that was great, I thought. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely a different portrayal of a werewolf. Uh, also, doesn't he show up as a werewolf like sometimes during the day? It seemed yes. like he was, and that because yeah. I was confused about the day for night and the actual day scenes. Day for day, yeah, yeah. there he is. So, so he's not you know, unlike the Yeti who had no eyes, I don't uh, think. Geez. Yeah, no, he was out of control. <laughs> uh, now, you know, in other films, he's more traditional. You know, right, turns the werewolf and at, at the kill anybody. Movie. Yeah, uh, but here he's he's uh, a sex slave. <laughs> he's got a conscience. He's got a conscience, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, right. Yeah, and he makes decisions. Yeah, he's more like the werewolf by night. From yeah, the, I was uh, getting ready to say. 
Uh, I yeah, this this yeah, this one of the best. This guy I like werewolf it. by day by night. Yeah. Oh, here they are. Here they are. There's the. Uh, and you were thinking one of them was more werewolf. Well, the one on the bottom I thought was werewolf. She yeah, was definitely kind of hairier. The one he killed first was the vampire, I think. Right. Because that's, that's the one he did with the. Did he do it with the spike or did something else? Yeah, he, uh, he did them both with the arrow, didn't he? Did he? Arrow. Yeah. How did he do I'm the trying to remember. One? I think he. If you're a vampire, yeah. if you're a vampire nymphette, why would you keep an arrow sitting around for someone to grab? Well, it it was. Well, well we, have, we had a picture of him somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right there. There, there, there stuck he is. That guy, right? The little vampire. Stuck in that guy. guy yeah. Oh. Who's that guy? Did we find out who that guy was? He, he's, nope. uh, he's, look, he's like a werewolf. He's like a skeletal werewolf. I guess he was their dad. I guess so. Yes. Or a vampire. Or a or vampire. A man, or a vampire. He had some There's gnarly, gnarly uh, intertwined teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Because they yeah. definitely had this, you know, the, the path was cursed and they were all, no, it isn't. All that nonsense. But uh, yeah, back to these girls. There's the nice cannibal yeah. scene. They're in there at the, I, now there is a Larry Talbot in this movie, but I don't yes. know if that's Larry Talbot or not. They're chewing on. No, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure who falls off the cliff. Larry Talbot was the guy on the spike. Oh, oh. no, Larry. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, the spike. We got a picture of him, right? There he, there he is. is. Ouch. Now, hey, where'd that but, thing go in? Uh, yeah. Well, Diodato's not looking at this movie. Yeah, this yeah, was right. before. Before. Mm -hmm. Now, from the position, it doesn't necessarily have to be that far down. It could be the lower back. Oh, Doc. Could be. I don't think you'd so still naive. be talking. Well, it isn't coming out of his right. mouth. <laughs> if it was, his voice would have been, please kill me. Mm. Kill me. Yeah, that scene, you know, he's like, please kill me. And the guy's like, I'll do it. And then he just dies. It's like, what, did you talk to death? Yeah. Never mind. Him? Never mind. Um, all right, there's the Yeti. Uh, it's it's a yeti. Terrible. It's, it's no. probably the same yeti you get in every other yeti film. You know, you know. People ask me, "Do I think Bigfoot's real?" And what what about the Patterson movie? And I go back and forth on it. You know that mm -hmm. what are the odds that two goobers going out to look for Bigfoot would be right there and take the one really good footage that's ever been taken? Seems pretty unlikely. But then again, I look at every movie where they've made a Bigfoot costume. And it sucks. It's terrible compared to the to, to Patty in that mm -hmm. footage. It's so much superior to everything that was being produced at the time and pretty much since. And I've I've even seen people who say, Oh no, I'm the guy who built the suit. Now look, I built another one. It's like, well, why were you so good in 67 and you're so bad now? So I don't know. I go back and forth, but this is just a mess. This if if you shot this walking through the woods and show it to people, everybody like, that's a guy in a in a suit, <laughs> not a very good suit. Yep. There'd be no no one would be looking at it frame by frame analysis to see if they can see muscles moving under the fur. Because no, this is just patchy and crappy, and it looks like he's wearing pants. And uh, I had to trick this up in Photoshop to make it even semi visible. You know, had to had to play with the levels because God knows the filmmakers did. <laughs> well, they did Sad. on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. did. They did. They did. That. Right. He looked like uh, he was waving goodbye to his career. That yeah. I mean. I, the Yeti, when I saw this as a kid, when it was on that whatever channel it was on, it ruined the movie for me. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, we, yeah, that, that's, I, this little thing down here at the bottom is lit so well with the, with the warm is. in the front and the cool in the, the back. The whole sequence and, is super well lit. And it's got the cobwebs in the right place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not like, what was the Dracula movie we were watching? They're like, Everything it was the Count Dracula, right? Where only the candelabra had cobwebs on it, and everything else was like, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. stained clean, right? Yeah, just um, Franco, yeah, yep. So, yeah. and then what's the one in the middle? Is that the decapitated guy? Oh, uh, that's right when there? she's doing the series, the, the slasher movie thing, running around, bumping into all the dead bodies. Hmm, but even that's pretty well that. composed with the candles and the lighting, you know. It's, it's yeah, she sees the head on the ground, and then she turns around to run and she sees his like uh, mute assistant hanging there. Or, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like it when they go and they they look in the in the it's, it's uh Baltimore and her and they look into the pit and they see the guy in there mm -hmm. and they're oh, yeah. like. Ah! That was her dad, wasn't it? I know, <laughs> right? It was yeah, such a phony. Uh, reaction. Her dad and Con. And Con. Con. 
the rot pit because they're just going to move the bed right back over the, the hole and mm-hmm. go about their yeah. business like nothing's but, happening there. But that bandit, the, the bandit guy that you're talking about who looked almost American, yeah. was was much more the villain of this movie than any of the supernatural um, creatures. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Bill, yeah. how did... Man is the greatest monster of all. Mm. I spent that whole movie trying to figure out what was wrong with that guy. Uh, you just said he had venereal disease before. Well, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Because <laughs> he had these uh, holes Ugly all over sore, his back. All, all over. Unless, unless they were blistering him or something. Yeah, he had some horrible skin know. condition, which could only be cured by putting the skin of a woman on it, which is, I think, how he got the thing in the first place. You know? yeah, well, that's probably the case. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the woman that they, they skin her back is the one that uh, was with the expedition that they yeah. captured. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we skin her back and lay. I don't lay think the, she was a virgin. So lay her skin yeah, over. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it burns. Oh. <laughs> oh I mean, what, I mean yeah. gosh, what else can we say about this movie? We got to pick something, guys. It's got everything. Uh, uh, it's got everything, and it moves. That's why I like it. it moved. It, yeah, it's, it's a very enough... fast-moving flick. Yeah. You didn't have enough time to think about how stupid it was, so that, that's fine. It, it, well, what more can you ask for? Okay. So we've seen But I guess you gotta yeah. search around to get the right version. If you want to see all the blood and gore, you gotta maybe search around for the longest uh right. see the run times and so you recommend you recommended the uh shock factory one that's on Tubi? Yeah, it, it was crystal. No, it was clear. on Shout Shout TV, right? Shout, Shout TV. Is that what I said? Yeah, yeah, Shout TV. And it was Shout Factory TV, and it was crystal clear. Yeah. Um I assume it's the picture. Version of the Blu-ray that they have, probably, um, and, and it was fantastic looking. Uh, um, I think that one was an hour and twenty-seven minutes. Yeah, it was. It was especially a- compared to Fury of the Wolfman that looked like it had been stored in a shed somewhere. Yeah. In a spot. Ah, I know. I wonder if there's a restoration of that somewhere that we should I don't take care. a look at. No, but all the, the colors and all the the lighting it just made it look made the film mm-hmm. look fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we've seen three of them, Chad. Yay! Which one is your favorite thus far? This one. This one? Definitely. I yeah. I had the most fun watching this one. I didn't. I wasn't spending most of my time going. That was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, you know. And or what uh, the hell just happened? I couldn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody really screwed up in editing on this or somehow. <laughs> I didn't do any of that. I was just into the movie. Uh, had had a lot of fun watching it. So this was this was my favorite. Yeah, Bill, I, I know you've you've seen a few more because I know we've seen Frankenstein's Bloody Terror together. Um it's mm. and and we also talked about one that uh, maybe right. we may agree on. Do you what what do you think? What do you you know I gotta see I gotta see some of those earlier ones as I as I remember them, the earlier ones had a seemed to have, you know, a bit more of a budget, better production values. Yeah, they were very much emulating like the universal horror type stuff with updated gore and nudity or some at least yeah. um and yeah i, I kind of enjoy that but i think of the later ones of the later nashi when budgets were getting a little bit tighter and um yeah this is this is fun i, I enjoyed this no no reservations yet this is this is fun um, well one of the films of one of the films is actually considered lost so the, yeah. there's yeah. two of them two yeah three of them were made in the 60s and one of them is considered lost, uh, which uh, the Knights of the Wolfman are Los Noches de Um Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, wolf. So the, the, uh, the Blu-ray from Scream Factory, you can choose either English dubbing or original Spanish language as the soundtrack. Ooh. Which for this is one? nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to. I, I don't know. I, I'm sure they aren't all the same. This one, some of them have uh commentary from the nashi cast guys this did not uh there was no commentary i don't know if it's because they used both the they used two tracks for the sound um but i always get a kick out of listening to the dubbing with the uh, <laughs> subtitles and they don't match by, <laughs> yeah. by, by quite a bit you know because i assume the dubbing is they're trying to match to their lips and they're changing the words around and stuff mm-hmm. in some way and that the subtitles are closer to an actual translation but 
That was some yeah, strange. The, the dubbing wasn't terrible in this movie. It didn't really take uh -uh, me out. No. Nah, it did fun. It, it's it, it's what you expect, but not horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not distracting. Uh, there are. I was going to say there's other films that he did. I want to just get into this real quick. Other types of you know he did. Uh, he did a lot of films, but horror films. Horror Rises from the Tomb is one we got to do. Hanging. Uh, I've Woman. heard that's a good one. Yeah, and Hanging Woman is another one we need to do. Uh, Vengeance of the Zombies is another one. Count Dracula's Great Love is another one that we need to do. Uh, Hunchback of the Morgue. Is Great another. title. Yeah. Um, uh, which, uh, the Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll. Mummy's oh, Revenge. Even, even did a Mummy's oh, Revenge. Revenge. Uh, um, there's a, one called Crimson that I've heard a lot about. Um, the rats don't sleep at night might be another way you've heard it. Um, I, and I'll stop there, but you can see just in the devil's, the devil's possessed. He did, uh, uh, and somewhere there's a, there's an exorcism film in here. Uh, exorcism, it's called exorcismo and you might just see it as exorcism. Uh, so, I mean, he did, and I'm only mentioning like a small portion of what he did he did all the different types of monster movies. He's, he is a legend of horror and, and needs yeah. far more love than uh, most fans give him. Yeah. And, and, and again, especially modern fans, modern fans. Right. I think, it, I think, uh, go ahead. I was saying it's, it's not because he was born seven feet tall or had acromegaly or, you know, any of the things that might make you gravitate toward horror. Um, he just seemed to genuinely enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. And and that's something, you know, that makes him a little bit unique. Um, so, some folks like Peter Cushing got typecast because they were just so damn good at what they were doing. And it became a, a comfortable presence in horror movies. Some like Christopher Lee are giants. And, and so they get cast. But this guy just, he seemed to enjoy doing horror. And then after a while, that became his brand. And he embraced mm -hmm. it. He didn't see him like, I'm tired of doing monster movies. I want to mm -hmm. do Shakespeare. When am I going to be cast as Othello? You know, and all, the, all mm -hmm. the whining and stuff. No, he just, he did it pretty much to the end. I mean, he wrote them. He wrote them. Yeah. He, like, he, yeah. He, yeah. And he directed some of them. So yeah, he's definitely, uh, I mean, he worked in the horror films up until he passed away. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so Jeff. Know, no, uh, go ahead. I was, I was, I was say, just going to say, if, if he had lived a little bit longer, he's the kind of guy, you know, like you can imagine Quentin Tarantino sticking him in some movies in a yeah. small role just to celebrate all that he did. Yeah, he passed away in 2009 at the age of 75. Mm. Wow. Uh, so, Jeff, I cut you off earlier. Did you do you remember what you wanted to say then? Uh, I was just going to say uh, that the it, this kind of reminds me of what's going on with the uh, El Santo and Blue Demon movies too, where mm, yes. somebody's people are putting together these Blu-ray packages, and then once that happens, then they start showing up on the streaming media in good quality. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, before that, all you had was was you know stuff like Fury of the Wolfman, which which not only was it a bad image, it was a chopped up story, right? That was one that yeah. was right. chopped mm -hmm. up from previous movies, so. Um, so anyway, yeah, this was fun. I'm gonna get into watching the rest of these. Well, we're gonna do them here. Spread on out the podcast. a podcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, we got to do the uh, vampire one by the end of the year. That's that's. Mm -hmm. I'm putting that down. We have to do it. He's putting it down. Got to do it. <laughs> He's putting his foot down. It's in the bag. <laughs> we know two of the films we're doing between now and the end of the year. So everything else is up for grabs. <laughs> We've teased it. And we got to do some of the we gotta do some of the non-werewolf ones. <laughs> All right. Um I yeah, we could we could talk and talk about this this movie, but it, it I mean, even though it kinda is complex, it's very simple. It's it's basically get from point A to point Z. Right. And 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 get through your bosses along the way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the big boss. Yeah. Once you get past the big boss, you got to fight the, the yeti. So if you if you find <laughs> it's a Sunday afternoon, you've made yourself a sandwich and you got some chips and you say, "I want to watch something yeah. that's not oh, two and a half hours long," and it's a good old fashioned werewolf 
Wolfman story. This is this is your movie. You just just sit there yeah. and have fun, and um, you know, no no biggie. You don't have to use uh, most of your brain to figure it out. And and uh, I, it's, yeah. that's what I feel like it is. Just yeah, watch it with the whole family. Explain to the kids what a cannibalistic nymphette is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, all and the find movies. Out how to make. Uh, Low budget movie. So, you know, if you want to shoot a scene in Scotland, you just get some stock footage of Edinburgh and play bagpipe music. Edinburgh. Well, I, I, and then cut I, I thought to that the was interiors. England. It looked it looked to me like it was England, but they were playing Scottish music. Well, that could have been. That could have been. Yeah. So you, it was I Pilot know. Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, you also got to consider, Bill, that, you know, Nashi and the, was thriving in the 70s. Doing these horror films when Hammer Films was struggling. Struggling, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, it, it they didn't necessarily all translate, you know, uh, across the world, but definitely was thriving in Spain and in, in yeah. most of yeah. Europe, I would imagine. And of course, Spain was Spain was such an interesting place for horror movies because you know they had, you know, General Francisco Franco was was still alive, and uh, it's it was a pretty repressive place. But horror thrives. Some of the horror movies that came out then did real well. And the, the story I've always heard is that this was the way the filmmakers could make films about the government without, yeah. you know, actually. Yeah. And they're like, wait a minute. Is this a movie about a repressive uh, society and, uh, you know, a bunch of soul-sucking dictators? No, no, he's a vampire. I don't know where you got that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. then, fine. Yeah. yeah, we got Tombs of the Blind Dead. And then there's a whole bunch of... Uh you know, Spanish, Spanish slash uh, Italian slash UK mm -hmm. films that were made. Uh, uh, well, Spain's got some, one. yeah, Spain's got some great locations too. None of which look like Tibet, but you know, okay, whatever. But they yeah, do, they have, for a hot they second. have, right. But they have all the different types of terrain, right? Cause they have Ooh, desert, right. they have, they have mountains, they have the seaside ocean, right? So. And you have to suspend disbelief just a little bit, you know. You you don't sit there and go, "That's not that's not the Himalayas." Well, how many, <laughs> you'll how ruin many, the fun for yourself. How many yeah, times sure. have they done something that was supposed to be off the coast of North Carolina, and they got these big palm trees from California? Right, right. Or Florida, and it yeah. happens all over the time. Or you're in Florida, and there's a freaking mountain in the background. There ain't no mountains mm. in Florida. <laughs> yeah. At least they, I they was kept, wondering how you like the dance scene there, Chad. Oh yeah. I don't know because I zipped past that <laughs> <laughs> so fast your head would spin. Uh, here, here's a little bit of trivia. What what film do you think, uh, as a child, Paul Nashie would see that would inspire him to become a werewolf in cinema later in the years? Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Well, it's either Curse of the Werewolf. I think it's Curse of the Werewolf. Chad, your mm. guess? Yeah, mm. I think so too. It would be Curse the Werewolf or um, that he would see as a child. He would see as a child. Um, I don't know. As a child. Uh, I would have to Frankenstein say Frankenstein versus the Wolfman. Nope, oh, somebody read it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what? Frankenstein. No, Frankenstein, read it. Frankenstein no, that does make sense. One. That yeah. does make sense because he does like to have his Curse of the Werewolf is too recent. Yeah. Right. Uh, he was born 34, so that would be, he'd be 10 or 11, 12 years yeah, old when he's yeah, old. So. True, true, true. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is, that, that is, that's a film that shaped many, many a monster kid. From oh, absolutely. Yeah. Film. I mean, you watch it now and it's, it's full of flaws, but yeah, at the time, I didn't even mind the fact that much like this movie, the climactic battle was way too short. Um, yeah, that, that was, that was a fun, that was a fun movie. Now, it's a shame we never got to see it the way it was supposed to be with the monster talking and Bela Lugosi's voice. And, oh uh, my gosh! Yeah, Good, yeah, that movie. The, uh, what what is, what is the first Paul Natchez film you saw, Bill? Is it, did you ever see one in the seventies? Did you know who he was in the seventies, or was it later in? You know, no, I don't think I ever saw one. I I saw his picture many times in Famous Monsters. Right. So right. I was aware of who he was and, and that, you know, that he was this guy who's a horror superstar. But I don't think his, I don't remember any of his stuff ever being shown on Chiller Theater or Creature Features or all mm -hmm. the other sources. 
They did they did the occasional hammer. They did all the universals and and the AIP and the Roger Corman stuff. But I don't think Nash. I don't think he ever got anything on there. Yeah, I mean, if if they were few and far between, um, I remember catching Dracula's Greatest Love um, because it was such a strange title, and I, I think I saw that um, like on a late Friday or Saturday night one one weekend up in DC. Uh, but yeah, Nashi was one of these guys you'd read about, but mm -hmm. and you know until you know VHS came along, you could see one of his films was a challenge often. Yeah, that was such a different time. And I mean, and I don't, and this is not going to be old man telling you to get off his lawn and stuff and everything. I, I would not want to go back to the old days where you just, but it, there is there was something cool about being introduced to these films, but not ever getting to see them and just looking at the pictures and imagining what it, what the movie was like. Yeah, yeah. Often making them way better in your head because the pictures usually showed way better stuff than what was in there they they, they take on a, a different air they they, they yeah. become almost mythical or magical mm -hmm. in your head as opposed to now where if i if someone were to bring up some film from the past that i haven't seen i could immediately i can probably find it download it see the trailer find interviews with the people making it uh you know it was just it was a different time and it, it turned us into turned me at least into the fans that we are i'm not saying it's it's worse now certainly it's better for people who actually want to see the movies but just like with comic books there were no comic book stores you just had to race from one drugstore to the other and hope that you could find a halfway decent copy yeah. of whatever yeah. you were looking for because they didn't know no drugstore got all the comics they got mm -hmm. some and you know this one this month they didn't get x-men oh it's off to the next drugstore why my parents put up with this nonsense of being driven from drugstore <laughs> to drugstores beyond me thank goodness they did Spinner racks, man. Spinner racks. Spinner racks. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, Lisa oh. had a great title to top comics. Yeah. Hey, kids, comics. Yep. Yeah. Good luck finding you? a mint copy on the spinner rack. I'm yeah. people bending it back. Oh, let me bend back these X Men and see if they have life with Jughead. Oh, you idiot. What about you, Chad? So, when did you start watching Paul Nashi films? I, I, when we started covering them here, but I, <laughs> but I, made them. I, I first heard of him. When I was, I think those box sets that were coming out, maybe oh, yeah. two or three years ago, or mm -hmm. maybe longer. But uh, I was like, "Who's that guy? Who's that guy?" So um, when I saw a couple of them pop up, I think it was on Sh it was Shutter or wherever I found that Fury of the Wolfman thing. I was like, "Well, let's try it." And that was not a, that's not the one to uh, <laughs> right right that's not the one to start out on mm -mm. right um, you know to start out watching, but. Um, yeah, I'd never heard of him. Uh, all the time I've loved horror movies and monster movies and werewolf. My whole life I've never heard of him up until that I can recall. I may have seen pictures in Famous Monsters or mm -hmm. something like that, but never never made the connection. But yeah, he's just not wasn't well known. I think he deserves a little bit more credit than or recognition than 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 that. You know. Um. Yeah, I have a kind of kind of fanatics. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have yeah. a. I had a couple of the, the VHSs and a, a couple of the DVDs. Um, I've probably seen Werewolf versus the Vampire Woman a dozen times over the years mm. from the seventies forward. That that was one I do remember loving. Um, and, it, and you'll find out by the end of this year, Jeff. What about you? And is this the? I mean, you bought the Blu-ray. So. I did, I did, but I I had heard about them just on social media, with you know, hooking up with different horror. Uh, people and groups and stuff like mm -hmm. that and, and some people going nuts over them and I, I tried to find stuff to see and it was all you could find was you know crappy you know the, the stuff like fury of the wolfman right or, or very mm -hmm. poor quality so when these came out that's when i thought well this is worth checking out the the shout factory boxes i think there's a total of 10 movies on those too mm -hmm. and what do you what do you think what do you what do you guys think the percentage of horror fans out there um have seen or know much about these films i mean now it's uh, getting know. more yeah it's getting to be more but as a kid you never talked about him mm -hmm. or nobody knew about him but i think now more people do i the more I've, um I've, we've talked about him the more i hear the name now 
Mm-hmm. If I'd heard the name before, I wouldn't know who he was. So I'd just blow it off. But now that we've yeah. talked about him and I hear other people talk about him, it kind of gets my ear a little bit. And I'm, but it's, so it's better in that way. But I don't think right. I still don't feel like a ton of people know know about him. No, just and, and as I don't hardcore know if, fans, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if the newer generation. You know, here's another thing. Again, old man. Um, the way we watch films. You got int- it was like you got introduced in little bits. You saw the films that were allowed to be shown on early day TV. And then, mm-hmm. it, you know, as you got older, you got to stay up later and watch the horror films that they would show on TV, but only late at night. And then you got HBO or Skinamax or something. You started seeing uncut modern horror. All right, so there's a progression there. You start out with the tame stuff. You become a fan. And then you, when you're ready for it, you're introduced to the harder stuff. And now, of course, as a child of... of this age any kid can watch anything they want at any time they want and they probably go for the hard stuff first and then older films probably seem too tame yeah. you know it's hard it's hard to start up here and then work your way back it's it's difficult unless you really develop an appreciation for film and everything to go back on the older things i love some of the older stuff but the i don't know is... if i would feel the same way <laughs> you got to prepare them for it cuz i i remember watching Two, two of my favorite movies with the grandkids. One was the original King Kong, mm, and they're right him. off the bat going, oh, how fake, you know? <laughs> so I had to stop and explain the whole historical context. I had to <laughs> Threaten. Uh, and, and then the other one was Alien. And I'm sitting mm. there thinking, I am not sure I want yeah. to show this to these grandkids. And they were like, this is pretty boring, you know? It's a long hard, time hard before anything that. happens, you know. <laughs> well, there's a long time yeah. before anything happens, but but it, you and know, that's I, not I how my, that's not a roast in that time period, right? I mean, Netflix so they're, movie they're so used up to an earthquake, and they're so used yeah. to uh, uh, you know, comic book movies and Transformers mm-hmm. and Big yeah. Bang Boom, this stuff is happening all the time, right? So, kids today and their music, it's just noise. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. Well, let's go ahead and, and move along. That's our. Re- review and discussion about the werewolf and the yeti known by a variety of different titles um search them out <laughs> Watch yes, this movie. Yeah. let us know what you think of it down below uh what do you th- what what am i trying to say i am trying to say jeff do we have any feedback we have a couple we have a couple hmm. so let's do feedback eh all right eh. okay uh i'll just go ahead and read these the uh <laughs> <laughs> Chad's buddy Dallas Nostromo writes in about Dark Star, number 187. I own Dark Star on DVD, and every few years I'll dig it out and watch it. However, oh, wow. I've never been able to view it in one sitting. I always fall asleep and have to finish <laughs> it. Wow. Oh, my God. There's movies like that for me. I actually read yeah. the novelization by Alan Dean Foster before I even realized there was a movie, Dallas. Uh, you know, was, you know, was there he's an right. I also, by Alan Dean Foster? <laughs> there was, and and it was him saying this jogged my memory. I also read the book before I saw the movie. I forgot about that, and I bought it just because I loved the cover. It was a, a guy in a spacesuit surfboarding into the atmosphere, starting to burn up. And I like mm-hmm. that's a cool image, and it just, and it did remind oh, me yeah. of the uh, of the uh, Ray Bradbury story. Which, by the way, Jerry Chandler sent me a radio. Um, play version of um, oh, the Bradbury story i think it was called kaleidoscope or so yeah and it was yes, very very is well done that is the very wow. well done yeah go jerry um okay so then we have one from mikey z mikey z on 185 death race 2000 saw this in my teens in 1976 on cable tv and loved the points for kills aspects mm. of the film how many recent video games were based on that concept? Mm-hmm. Uh, Stallone, as a bad guy, Carradine as the hero, made 10 years later and roles would definitely have been reversed. Yep. So much fun. Best tagline should have been, line them up, run them down, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have been a better one. Very satirical in the post-gas shortage, CB era of the 70s. A yeah. plethora of road racing films would follow. Cannonball, Smokey and the Bandit, Eat My Dust, and Convoy would fill the cinema screens. Favorite scene is, of course, the geriatric lineup. 
Yeah, I think I think we had. Yeah. I think that was Doc's favorite too. I remember laughing so hard when I first saw it. The guy peeking out of the manhole cover ranks as number two. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very trauma like before trauma. Great podcast, guys. Keep them coming. Well, thank you, thank, thank you, Mikey. Mikey. You're welcome, Mikey Z. Yeah, that's a crazy movie. I remember uh, I see Jerry wrote in about that and said it's it's like if you took uh, Looney Tunes and then added all the blood that you would have got. Yeah, yeah. From a Looney yeah. Tune cartoon. Now, I swear I had a video game, and this probably would have been Atari. I don't think it was an official Atari game, but I think I had a, a, a video a cartridge that was either called Death Race or that was the premise where there were little stick figure people running around, and you in a car would run them over and they would give a little squeal, a little electronic squeal, and then turn into a cross. Ow. And I remember people being very upset about this, that this oh, was yeah. going to warp us. But I turned out fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Little little did they know Grand Theft Auto was coming along. Play oh, along, yeah. guys. Play along. He's fine. Oh. It's good. It's good. good. All right. Do we know what our next pick is going to be there, Sir Jeff? Uh, we do. This one uh, is chosen by Bill. What are we watching, Bill? We are watching a Dario Argento, old Dario Argento, back when he was really, really good. And one of his earliest, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Which I think may have started the whole, if you got a Giallo movie, you got to put an animal in the title. Even if nothing remotely like that is, you know. Three uh, aardvarks on a woman's head, you know. <laughs> Cat in the brain. Or yeah. a color or something like that. Nope. Don't, yeah, right. don't tease a duck or whatever that one is. Don't three purple aardvarks. Don't on torture a, a duck. Yeah. Don't, don't torture yeah. a duckling. Yeah. Don't torture yeah. a duck. Cat of nine tails. Uh, right. Uh, Lizard on a like skin. <laughs> You're making uh, up. <laughs> no, no. Lizard <laughs> on a woman's skin is a real one. The aardvark oh, one I was okay. making up. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 I think. Oh man. Well, we'll have to have that discussion in a couple of weeks. All right. I'm looking forward to this. Wow, 1970, early, 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 early Argento. Early, That's, early yeah. Argento. So yeah. Where can we see it? We can see it on Tubi and Prime. Gonna, I, forget, uh, I think you said Prime and Tubi, didn't you? I think Prime and Tubi. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Tubi uh, goes without saying, right? Yeah, that goes. It does. Anymore. Tubi. Just about anything. We love Tubi. All right. Well, there you go. That's that's our show for tonight, Jeff. Chad, Bill, thank you for uh, joining me. It's a lot of fun as usual. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I love being here. <laughs> Let's get out and say good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Bond. <laughs>